cover right here. Now, All Star Superman is without a doubt my most requested comic book review, at least as of recently. But see, there's something that perplexes me about how much this is requested. Is that most people who request this review send me a message or a comment along the lines of this Andrew, All Star Superman is fantastic. I love the book. I really think that you should go pick it up and review it. I want to see what you think. Okay. So my question is this. You picked up the comic. You read the comic. And obviously you enjoyed it. Why do you need me to review it? You already enjoyed the comic. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want me to review something, by all means, I, I'll try to. But you already enjoyed the comic. Why do you need me to review it to tell you it's a good comic? Whatever the case may be, the fact of the matter remains is there's people out there that have not read this, that don't know if this is good or not. And, because that is the case, I will take the financial hit, and I will bring you a review of All-Star Superman. Now, the question is this, is whether or not this lives up to the hype that All-Star Superman has. Because going into this comic, I had huge expectations. Because everyone was saying that this was the best Superman story in the longest time. It embodies everything that is Superman. It is fantastic. It is just amazing. But see, problems can arise that when expectations are set so high, when standards are set so high, comics may not be able to live up to those expectations. I'm not saying this is the case with All-Star Superman, but I'm not saying it's not the case either. So will All-Star Superman live up to the expectations, the standards that were set for it when I walked in and read it? Or will it just not be as good as everyone says it is? You're just going to have to wait and see. So let's get into the story itself. All-Star Superman actually has a very plain and simple story to it. And the story isn't actually what makes the book the book. It's actually the interactions and what happens because of the story. But the story is simple. Superman goes out and he saves a bunch of astronauts near the sun. Now, because Superman's body is, in essence, a living solar battery, he absorbs too much of the sun's radiation, and thus he is killing himself. He's overloading. His cells are exploding because there's so much sun energy in him. So, before Superman dies, and he will die, he wants to accomplish several different things. He wants to talk to people. He wants to express feelings to certain people. <coughs> Lois. Um, and he wants to accomplish these labors, these tasks, which get translated into 12 labors or 12 tasks of Superman before he dies. However, things aren't all so easy as it seems, because, well, Lex Luthor is on the loose, and Lex has a diabolical plan to take out the Man of Steel if he doesn't die from the solar radiation. He always has a trick up his sleeve. Why? Because he's Lex Luthor. He's one of the most intelligent, diabolical villains of all time. So, will Superman be able to accomplish all he needs to before he dies? Will he save the world from imminent doom? And will he stop Lex Luthor in his plans of world conquest and being a total douchebag? These are all questions that do get answered in this book, but you're going to have to read and see if those questions are answered the way you want them to. So let's get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. So, well, let's start things off with the good, as we always do. Story. Well, the story was very plain, very straight to the point, and it was well paced. See, that's interesting because Grant Morrison is the writer. Now, as you guys know, I give Grant Morrison a lot of shit, but I don't want people to get the wrong interpretation of how I feel about him. See, I just won't let Grant Morrison get away with the shit that a lot of people do let him get away with. I like Grant Morrison. I think he's a great writer. He does fantastic storytelling, and he really does a lot of stuff that I like with his stories, like incorporating elements from previous comic book eras, like the Silver Age or the Golden Age, or pushing certain characters to the limit, or dealing with epic, over-the-top stuff. I mean, his running on JLA is one of my favorite Justice League runs. What he's doing with Batman is fun, it's interesting, it's new. Although it's being dragged out a little bit too long, it is fun, interesting, and new. But like I said, I call Grant Morrison out on stuff, like I would call anyone else on stuff. And one of the big faults that Grant Morrison has is he tends to make his comics a little too dragged out and longer than they need to be. 
This comic is not. This comic has a mandate. It has X amount of issues. It is a story that has a beginning and an end. And it's a very clear story with really no complexity to it, with the exception of maybe one scene, but that's about it. It's very straight to the point, and it's refreshing, because since JLA, I still feel as though I've had that with Grant Morrison, and I miss it. There is one thing about being complex and being nice and detailed, but there's another thing on being, well, not understandable in your comics. And I'm not saying that Grant Morrison can't be understood, but when I have to read something and really think about it for a long time, and I have to be, oh, maybe he means this, it can get annoying. And in this, we don't have that. It's just a clear-cut story. And I applaud you, Grant Morrison, for that. I know I give you a lot of shit, but you are a good writer. You did a good job at the story in pacing it nicely. Another good thing is you aren't really encompassed with what the story was. I'm not the biggest Frank Whiteley fan. I don't know what it is about his art, but it doesn't really, I don't know, appeal to me that much. Maybe because I always feel as though the skin is going to fall off his characters he draws. I don't know, I still like some of his art in certain comics. For example, his Batman and Robin stuff was nice. And I did enjoy this, and when I was flipping through the pages of JLA Earth 2, the art looked good in that. But I was never the biggest fan of him. However, the art came out nice in this. Particularly Lex Luthor, who looks this menacing, diabolical, and a huge threat. Lois Lane has a certain elegance and dignity to her that is often lost with Lois in recent years. And, for some odd reason, Jimmy Olsen has a unique exoticness to his drawings that is welcome. That may come off as weird, because it's Jimmy Olsen, but he really does have a kind of cool look with his bed hair kind of put up that way, and I don't know, it's just cool. So the art in this is good. It's not absolutely fantastic, but it's good, and it's nice, and it's enjoyable for what it is. The only character that I have to say that I didn't care for drawn was actually the Man of Steel himself. He kind of looks too much like a behemoth, and his cape is way too short. Anyways, moving on. I do like some of the emotion that is drawn up in this, particularly from the two characters of Lex Luthor and Lois Lane. See, I like how Lois Lane is portrayed in this, in that she's not necessarily the crying, weeping, all over the place, damsel in the distress, OH NO, SUPERMAN IS DYING! No, Lois is actually very much in doubt of this actually happening. She doubts Superman being Clark Kent, she doubts Superman dying. She is very much a person that is in, well, doubt. And even when Superman does do his final act, she still believes that he's going to come back to everyone. And in that, it's not only a sense of support, but it shows that Lois is a very strong character. Yes, she does love Superman. She's sad when stuff goes wrong. However, she's not weeping and crying like a baby. She takes it like a woman, and she understands that Superman is a hero, and heroes can die, heroes can fail, and it's something that she's learned to live with. And I think it was a very nice complexity that they did with Lois in that. They didn't make her the weeping, crying, non-controllable crybaby. They actually made her into a nice character that handles things differently. I like how Lex Luthor is also struggling with himself, with Superman, and with what his goal in life is. And towards the end of the comic, Lex comes off as more human than he's ever did. Let's face it, despite the fact that Lex Luthor is very much human with no superpowers, he is often viewed as a stoic-like god villain. Super intelligent, being able to outthink any situation, fight death itself. It's almost like he's the evil version of Batman when it comes down to intelligence. I mean, he always finds a way out of something. He seems almost like a god. But in this, they really humanize him as a character that has faults, and he actually kind of omits them in the end. Because one of the biggest things Lex Luthor has is pride, and you really see the pride in this, and then you see the pride kind of dwindle away, and you see humility, which is actually pretty refreshing for Lex as a character. And you can do it because this is an off-world story. So that's another good. Bad. Well, despite how good this comic is, there is bad in here. One is that the Man of Steel himself didn't impress me as a character. Yeah, sure, it was the basic, worldly interpretation of Superman, fighting the good fight to the very end, always doing good stuff, but I really didn't see how Superman was dealing with him dying. 
I really would have liked to see Superman struggle with the fact that he wasn't going to be around anymore. I mean, sure, he went around and he did his labors, but it was almost like he was okay with death. It was more or less he was upset about how people were going to feel when he died. I would have really liked to see Superman deal with the fact that, oh, gee, I'm going to die. I'm a little scared, or I'm a little sad, or I'm a little angry. He doesn't have those emotions. He is standardly Superman, impenetrable and fighting to the very end. Seeing that this is an Elseworlds story, I would have liked to see Grant Morrison dealt a little bit, just a little, not too much, a little bit with Superman maybe regretting have died, maybe being upset or sad or even scared. I remember being told that Grant Morrison got his inspiration for this comic by having an interview with someone that was cosplaying as Superman. I got this information from one of my co-workers, and then I got it confirmed from online sources. And I find it kind of interesting that he actually got inspiration for this book from a person that cosplay as Superman. And he said that this person embodied what Superman was. And in turn, the interpretation of Superman in this is the embodiment of Superman. So you have a very standard fight the good fight, Man of Steel, unstoppable Superman here. But it still would have been nice if he did incorporate a little bit more humanness in Superman. When I look at all Wars stories, it's hard not to compare any of them to Kingdom Come. Because Kingdom Come, in, to me, is one of the best uh, world stories of all time. Mainly because Superman is portrayed as the Man of Steel, but also is very much human. I would have liked to see some of that translated into here. While this is very much Superman that will make us laugh, make us cry, make us angry, and make us happy, He's just Superman. It would have been nice to see a little bit more character development in that sense. In addition to that, I feel there's a few things here that really wasn't necessary to be put in. Like, the Jimmy Olsen Black Kryptonite stuff. I understand that got a point across about Jimmy Olsen and Superman, but still, they could have done it in a better way without taking up a whole issue. I really like the Bizarro World stuff with the unique Bizarro there that actually has sentience. But, again, they spent too long on that, they could have really cut it down to, like, really only one issue. There's some stuff in here that they could have put in, and they could have taken out, and it just... There's a few things I would have done differently. That's just the other bad. On a whole, whether or not you should get it. Well, I am going to tell you right now, and please do not be upset with me, All-Star Superman didn't quite live up to the hype that was set for me. But see, that's the problem with hype, is whenever something has huge amount of hype and your expectation is set high for it, it often doesn't work out well. I mean, unless it's like a Zelda game, but I mean, the fact of the matter remains is it did not quite live up to the hype that everyone set for it. But, despite the fact that it did not live up to that hype, it was still a really good story. Is it the best Elseworlds story? I don't think so. I still hold Kingdom Come and probably... Dark Knight Returns and other stuff a little bit higher than this, but this is still good and this is still fun. And it still reminds us that Superman is the Man of Steel and it kind of gives us a refreshed image of who Superman is. Because in this day and age, Superman has kind of lost his magic, his, his pedazzle, his, his je ne sais quoi, for lack of a better term. Superman represents the best of everything the best of person's character, his honor truth, justice, the American way, the man of tomorrow, what we can hope to become, he represents that. And, well, even though we get this here, we haven't been getting it anywhere else. So it is nice that we get this here. It reminds us of who Superman is. And I have to give credit where credit's due. Grant Morrison did a very good job at this. Like I said, I do agree with Grant Morrison a lot of shit, but it's not because I don't like him. I like Grant Morrison. I think he's a good guy. I think he does good writing. But he has his faults, and I'm glad to say that the faults are not shown here. This is a good story. This is an a work story. But my recommendation is when you pick this up, and you should pick this up, go into it with a neutral stance. Don't listen to the hype at all. Just go in there open-minded. And the great thing about these comics is they're both only twelve ninety-nine each. So they're actually cheaper than what the standard comic would be, which these things should go about $19.99. So in the end, although this doesn't quite live up to the hype that I had set for it, and I blame mostly you guys for saying how good this was, it was still a really good story. It was 
really fun and it really did remind the reader of who Superman was and why he is the Man of Steel. So All-Star Superman, good book and I recommend picking it up. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.